Hello, this is Karde, and for this one I'm not going to be making a ship rework proposal or, you know, thoughts on any upcoming reworks. I am actually going to make a proposal for an entire ship. Now, throughout this, in the background, I'll have, of course, some shiny pictures of current existing ships, which are somewhat in the same role as the ship I want to talk about. These being right now the Drake Cutler series, the Misc Freelancer and the Aegis uh, Vanguard. And the reason I'm bringing these up is because these are all ships within the same size category and sort of in the same sort of multi-purpose role depending on like, you know, we can get different variants in them. Of course there's no denying that a Vanguard is going to be primarily dedicated to being a fighter ship. The Cutlass is a bit more multi-role, can a bit do it all, but has some specializations as well. And the MISC, of course, has highly specialized hulls in the forms of the Dur and the MISC. Uh, so now the MISC... Or oh, whatever, you know, the military version with all the missiles. And of course it has this enlarged cargo version, but the normal one also has a fairly decent cargo bay. However, one thing that all of these ships have in common is that they are designed to be operated by generally at least two people. You can see this in the fact that they have manned turrets, for example. And we also know from CSG's own number that the Cutlass is currently the third most used ship uh, in the first, which is really not all that surprising because it's a ship of a decent enough size that can be reasonably operated by a single pilot and it has a high degree of flexibility. You know, it can transport cargo, it can take on combat engagements and such. Of course, as the universe expands, we can do more and more things. So there will be things that certain ships are no longer capable or are just not capable of doing all that much. But, you know, having flexibility is just going to be a really nice thing, especially most people will not have uh, enormous fleets to start out with. Like, a lot of people will still just be starting out with Auras or Mustangs. Some of you that gone a little bit more may have gone for the uh, HS Avenger or the Origin 300i, for example, which also over like a bit more than the starting ships for not an insane amount of extra money and are just well all around far more capable and above that you know you start looking indeed at the Cutlass, the Freelancer for example and the Vanguard of course is being I believe a little bit more expensive than that one was again but the ship that I am really really would like to see in Star Citizen is a ship in this size category so we're talking about 30 to 40 meters that has this multi-role nature to it but it is tailored around a single pilot so you're looking at a avenger or 300 series but does scale up a bit more uh, so like to the size of a cutlass or a freelancer or a vanguard but designed around being operated by a solo operator so this would be a ship that i think is ideally suited for the uh, rsi brand i think they have a gap right now in the lineup for a ship that would fill the size, but also it would make sense for their customer base. You know, RSI tends to deliver these ships that are known to be hugely reliable, very widespread in use, you know, means easy parts availability, and they're just having a really good reputation. Of course, if you're looking at Drake, it's known to have this very shady side of it you know being a favorite with pirates and outlaws and things like that and of course you know law enforcement and things like still use them but it has this certain yeah reputation that not everybody may like all that much and may affect very much its customer base on the side of misc we have of course this uh, integration of uh, alien technology in this case shell technology into their ship designs which does help them out with certain things but it also adds to the complexity uh, of the ship designs and of course it's going to come down to maintenance again and finally if you're looking at ages of course the vanguard is like it's a dedicated long-range combat ship and that's really what the ages brand is all about like they are very much around their uh, combat oriented ships overall so they're not gonna have a you know single person slight you know small to smallish to medium cargo hold or with guns on it a la a misc does with the freelancer for example or drake does with their buccaneer rsi and heifer would perfectly do that and they could be very much looking at like okay we have if people wanted to fly with multiple crew on board 
you know, they have this step up in the form of the constellation, which is really well placed. There's not much com competition for it, like the closest competition, if you can call it, would be like a retaliator with like cargo modules and things like that, which is not really a fair comparison. And of course, it has the advantage that it can be to a reasonable degree be operated by a single person because the pilot has his access over weapon systems and all of those things. So if adding crew to that will give you, you know, people in the turrets and things like that, so it will offer additional benefits, but you could solo operate it, but it's not entirely optimal for it. So making a ship that's a bit smaller, but it's still focused around that uh, single operator, fits extraordinarily well within the Robert Space Industries lineup, I think. So capability-wise, what would you be looking at for a ship like that? Well, we need a ship that can haul a decent amount of cargo. So you're looking at the cargo capacity, you know, around the Cutlass Freelancer level. Maybe you can do a bit less. It could be fine. You'll need a good amount of firepower, which is controlled by the pilot. Now, considering we're talking about a slightly larger ship, probably gimbaled weapons may not be a luxury in this case. So you could be going with uh, gimbaled weapons, or you could go with, like, the Freelancer does with its side-mounted turrets, which are, of course, also gimbaled. In because well, they're being turrets, because I think full set weapon systems may not really work all that well. And of course, players will be thinking about ah, I can make it full uh, solid weapon systems, and that's of course a choice you can make, but it would be in disadvantage. And it's already going to be disadvantaged by the fact that it will not have uh, any turrets, so you need to be, you know, facing your frontal arc towards your enemy to engage them, which is fine. I mean. They could easily compensate this by perhaps making it a bit more maneuverable or whatever is really needed. It's not going to be a dedicated combat ship, it just needs to have the ability to fend for itself if it needs, if the needs are there. So I would put a reasonable amount of heavy firepower to it because you know it's not going to be the most maneuverable thing. But you know maybe a little bit less than the Freelancer which is of course quite a bunch to it but Maybe a mix of like two size four and two size threes, you would have to balance it out to what works best. Beyond that, you know, we're looking of course at RSI, so it should be fairly common, parts should not be too expensive and easily available. Uh, it should of course be able to just land and take off wherever it wants to and have reasonable range to itself. You know, it's gonna be in some ways it's gonna be like the step up towards a constellation. So perhaps you're going to have a bit less range than uh, the fully kitted out constellation, but you're still going to be able to, you know, go travel to your trade routes efficiently and making a profit, uh, whether you're hauling cargo or maybe you're going to do some bounty hunting in it. You name it, you can probably do it with it. The key being here is we're looking at the single person, because I do think there are going to be a lot of people that just want to explore the first on their own account you know they want to be going out there doing what needs to be done doing what they like to be doing and not feel being uh, limited because they are playing on their own now i'm not telling you to go and make me very large ships that can be operated by a single pilot because i don't think that would be beneficial to being an mmo of sorts and also to make it uh, it will make multi-crew ships seem very redundant very quickly but I do think within this size category, going to stick with a single pilot, it brings uh, natural disadvantages with it already. But it's also going to be a case of like, okay, I'm going to have just one person. I can give that person a bit more for what they have, personally control over. And, you know, they have their own downsides already with it. But it's just this nice little middle ground. Like you could even say, like, for example, these, both the Cutlass and the, uh, freelancer have missiles for example maybe you say like ah this RSI ship would not have missiles on it it would just have guns you know because well missiles adds additional complexity it requires additional systems so if I just stick with guns I don't need those additional systems you know which could be a cost saving great we can move on from there the key being is that we just have a ship that's going to service a lot of players, I think, very well. And I do think would compete really nicely with the offerings from Drake in the Cutlass and with Misk in the form of the Freelancer. 
I don't think it's going to compete all that much with the uh, Warden. I just included it in here because, well, it is in the same size category. But the Warden, of course, being a dedicated combat ship, it does fall a little bit outside of the scope. And I don't think that would be into the nature of RSI to really make a full-on dedicated combat ship in this size category. I mean, they probably are fully capable of it, but I don't think it's really their market. Their market really seems to be to supply the civilian market, mostly with uh, ships like the Aurora or the Constellation, you know, things that are reliable, proven, uh, easy to maintain, not that expensive overall, and you can just know they work. And then on the military scale, they offer these very large capital-grade vessels, in which they are you know, one of the bigger names that are out there, and... The military is going to be very happy with them, but for most civilians, it's really not going to be all that important to them, of course, outside things like uh, industrial sized capital ships, which will, of course, service them really well. But pure combat ships, beyond those very large capital ships, I don't really think fit their lineup all that well. But a multi role single crew ship in this size category, you know, set 30 to 40 meters, I think it's going to be a really nice addition to the first. And it would also bring some much needed variety to the first, because right now, as I said, like if people like the cut the cutlet so much, offering more ships in that same sort of role and size and all of that just makes a lot of sense. You know, it creates more diversity in the first. And also you can push Drake again a bit more into that slightly naughtier side of things, because maybe uh, certain militias would prefer an RSI brand chip over a Drake branded chip, maybe even maybe to the Drake maybe slightly cheaper, but again you know the negative uh, reputation that Drake has in certain aspects of course may force or may make local governments consider going with RSI over them because RSI of course has a very very good reputation in the first, like people are not people do not link RSI with piracy immediately. Of course, plenty of pirates will be using RSI ships because if something is proven to be reliable and effective and relatively easy to maintain, that's going to be ideal for piracy. But it doesn't have the name for it, it doesn't brand itself towards it, which Drake, of course, has. They very much embrace this uh, side of them, no, even though it's not made public like we're selling ships to pirates, but it's like, yeah, you know, we are a bit of like this brand, and it's like, it works for them, you know, it makes a lot of sense. If people buy your ships for that, then by all means go for it. But RSI, of course, is never going to be linked to that, and they would ensure uh, to the highest degree that they would never be. Because to their brand, it would be absolutely demolishing it. So, yeah, that's going to be my proposal. I know it's not all that complicated, but I don't think it has to be all that complicated for what we're asking for. Because in essence, what we're asking for is a, you know, a cutlass for a single person, pretty much. Uh, you could put it in that way. And I don't think it's bad to have multiple ships, of course, in the same area. So, like, we have tons and tons of combat ships already. So, you know, if you want uh, fighters, uh, you're relatively spoiled for choice. We've got multiple racing ships in the same category already. You know, you get your freighters and everything. So there are ships, uh, multi there should be multiple ships that serves each role and each of them can have their own unique thing about them like the freelancer being very much focused around the cargo handling and known for being the lone space trucker sh uh, ship of choice that's great uh, the cutlass being this all around cheap option that people just use a lot because well it's cheap is amazing but having then the RSI me mixed in there being like totally focused around being this single person ship there's no no desire or demand for anybody to be like, yeah, I want to fly this thing with two persons and it can just do its job really well and reliable. It's going to fit in that lineup quite well. But those are my thoughts. As always, i will very much like to hear yours. What do you think uh, would be an interesting ship to add to the first? And do you think that my suggestion for a ship from RSI within this lineup is going to be a great addition to the first? Or do you think it's going to be... Uh, not really needed. Uh, maybe you want to see another mining ship. Maybe you want to see more exploration ships. You know, give us some. Give some uh, ideas. Let us. Let CRG know what we, as the community, would like to see within our ships. Because there are just a lot of 
ships out there already, but of course we always like to see more, and well, CRG very much would like to sell more ships to us. Because after all, that's how they make their money right now. But as always, I hope you found this somewhat interesting at least, and I would like to thank you very much for listening to me, and uh, thank you in advance for providing any of your own thoughts on it within the comment sections. I'll see you around next time.